वक्रतुंड महाकाय सूर्य कोटि समप्रभ निर्विघ्न कुर मे देव सर्वकार्यु सर्वदा सरस्वती नमस्तुभ्यं वरधे कामिणी विद्यारंभम क्या सिद्ध मे सदा गुरवे सर्वोका विषजे भवरोगिनाधेद्या दक्षिणा मूर्त नम ईश्वरो गुरुरात्मे मूर्ति भेद विभागिने व्योम व्यादेहाय दक्षिणा मूर्त नम सदाशिव सरंभा शंकराचार्य मध्यमा अस्मदाचार्यपर्यता वंदे गुरुपरंपरा शंकर शंकराचार्यशवरायण सूत्रभाष्यकृत वंदे भगवत पुनः पुनः श्रुतिस्मृतिपुराणय नमा भगवत्द शंकर लोकशंक साक्षात्त दयानंद परमास्वूपिण तत्वान प्रशास्ता परम पदम ओ सहना सहनौ भुन सह वीकवाहे तेजस्वीनाधीतमस्तमाषावे You can repeat. Natva Shri Bharati Tirtha. Natya Shri Bharati Tirtha. धीमहे कैवल्य पद सिद्ध Able to hear, Guruji. As I said uh, before, this Panchatashi class will be on alternate Thursday. So last week was Mandapa Upanishad. Today, this week, it will be Panchatashi. And next week will be Mundaka Upanishad, and the week after next will be Panchadashi. It is not on every week, every alternate Thursday, because we don't have time. So every day morning some classes there. So, so this will be on alternate Thursday. So if you do do it on alternate Thursday. Uh, when this panchadashi 
completed, you cannot say. It's a huge work, it's a big work. It has got 1571 shlokas spread in 15 chapters. And 15 chapters divided into three prakranams, three parts, three sections. Viveka prakranam, Deepa prakranam, Ananda prakranam. Viveka prakranam, five chapters. Deepa prakranam, five chapters. Ananda prakranam, five chapters. Five sections, five chapters. So Viveka prakranam has got about 294 shlokas. Deepa Prakranam is a bigger uh, section. That it has got 848 shlokas are there. And Ananda Prakranam has got 429 shlokas. So total 1571 shlokas. So therefore, it could it will take time. We don't know how many years it will go. And uh, the seventh chapter is the biggest chapter. The seventh chapter, 15 chapters are left. So, seventh chapter, it has got about 298 shlokas, 300 shlokas are there. And the next, next biggest chapter is the sixth chapter. Which has 290 90 shlokas. The smallest chapter is a fifth chapter, which has got only eight shlokas. And the chapter 10 has got 26, and 15th chapter has got 35 shlokas. So, therefore, the biggest chapter being seventh chapter, smallest chapter being fifth chapter. The number of shlokas in each chapter vary. So the chapter can be maybe within a particular time can be completed, but the total shlokas, the total, total text, it would take some time. And each chapter, even though the number of shlokas differ, each chapter is complete. It's complete in presenting the topic, whatever topic it has taken for taken for presenting, it is complete by itself. So the first uh, prakaranam is Viveka Prakaranam. And the Viveka Prakaranam, the first chapter is Tattva Viveka Prakaranam. And it starts with Shloka Mangala Shloka. As we saw in the last class, any text, any text will start with the Mangala Shloka. The text which doesn't start with Mangala Shloka doesn't deserve to be studied. In our tradition, we don't accept the text which do not have a Mangala, the Parthana Shloka. Mangala Charanam is important. The Mangala Charanam could be Vastu Nirdesha Mangala Charanam or Namaskara, Guru Namaskara, Atava Ishwara Namaskara Mangala Charanam or it is it could be Ashirvada Mangala Charanam. It can be of any type. Mangala Charanam should be there. Through Mangala Charanam, the, the author he invoked the blessing, blessings, blessings of Ishwara and presents the text. Without the blessings of Ishvara, Bhagavan, no text, without invoking, no text should be started. 
So the grace anugraha of Ishvara is important. Even though, even though our Siddhanta is Advaita, but, but Ishvara anugraha is important. Because Ishvara and Ishvara is there, that doesn't mean it is Dvaita, it is Advaita only. Many people have the wrong understanding because we are Advaitin, therefore, we don't have to go to the temple, we don't have to invoke the blessing of Ishvara when starting the text, but it is not correct. In fact, in one of the class, Puju Samaji has said, this Naishkarmya Siddhi, the famous text by Sureshwar Acharya, that text, it's a very, it's a very, uh, the, the, the text is, it's a beautiful text, but still, but still it doesn't talk about Ishvara. So that is seen as a demerit by Swamiji. It is, uh, it is uh, read by the Dalo of the world, that Meshkarma Siddhi, taken the text is taken by many Acharyas, but still, the text doesn't talk about Ishvara. There is no difference between the Jivatma and Paramatma. Jiva and Ishvara, there is no difference. Tattvataha Ekameva that's why we talk about Jiva, Ishvara, Aikyam. But Upaditaha, Vedaha, Asti. Jiva Upadi is limited. Ishvara Upadi is Maya Upadi. Water is same. Whether it is pot water or ocean water. Water is same. But Upadi are different. Gata, the pot is different. And the ocean that also has got the upadi, the shores, the shore is the upadi. That, that is upadi, that is upadi for the ocean. That is different. So, tattvataha, it is water only. But upadi taha, there is a difference. Hot water cannot deluge, cannot immerse a person. Ocean water can do. It has got that power. Ocean water is the house, is a residence for so many beings, from smallest to the huge shark. Whereas pot water is highly limited. So that is a difference. Difference is there. At the same time, non difference is there. When we say Aikyam, it is. Dropping the upadi, dropping the upadi, upadi being mitya, and presenting the oneness through by dismissing the, the difference, the seeming difference. Because that is mitya, upadi is mitya. It is nama rupa, it is mitya. As the water is same, whether it is the gata or in the ocean, it is same. That is Jnana, Aikya Jnana. Therefore, the Jiveshwara Aikya, when we say that Sarva Gnyatam, but Sarva Vidya, Ishwara is Sarva Vidya. In Vandukha Upanishad, we have seen a Sarva Gnya Sarva Vidya, Yasya Jnana Mayan Tapaha. Jiva is not Sarva Vidya. Ishwara is Sarva Vidya. Because Jiva is but limited to Padi. The Ishvara knows everything. He has got the knowledge of the Karmapala of all the Jeevas. But even though I am a Jnani, being a Jeeva, I am a Jnani, I know, I understand the vision of the Shastram. It is so clear to me that between me, the Jeeva, the individual and the Ishvara, there is no difference. Tattvataha, there is no difference. But Uparitaha, there is difference. There is a limitation that we don't deny. Ishvara knows the Karmapala of all the Jeevas and accordingly he does the Srishti. 
at the same ishvara it is sometimes it is present in the shastram as it comes as an avatara that is that concept also it is there so therefore ishvara is important invoking the blessings of ishvara is important even if the person is a jnani when he starts the text this this the prayer that is why the prayer vastu nirdesha roopa mangalacharanam vastu is this brahma brahma namaskara atava this in the form of aikyam this mangalacharanam should be there without that the text is it's not complete and the mangalacharanam serves two purposes as i said before it, the first one first purpose is it is a must it is a must therefore it has to be there and second one is by invoking the blessings of ishvara the text the text also the, the the author survives the author survives during the writing of the text he has to survive till the completion of the text and the text also has to survive after the author it has to survive it has to go to the, the next generation which the hands of the next generation should not become ajabakshita or agni bakshita it should not be consumed by goats are consumed by fire why goats because in those days everything were written in palm leaf so the palm leaf may be eaten by the goats so it has to be it has to be preserved and should be handed over to the the deserving the students and should pass on to the next generation that is how so many texts have have come have been handed over and it, and it is available now and it has to survive agni fire etc fire can consume so so many pratibandhas are there obstacles are there in completing and in survival surviving the text has to survive so therefore ishvara anugraha is important and uh, ishvara and it can be the mangalacharanam could be in the form of the anugraha invoking the blessing of either ishvara or guru because there is no difference between them the writer doesn't see the difference between the guru and the ishvara that's why like guru brahma guru vishnu guru devo maheshwara so guru itself is looked upon as ishvara so asking the blessings of the guru whatever guru had taught i should present i should present as he had taught me so the tatparyam has to be presented as it is without any change i may use different examples i may use different prakriyas i may elaborate on a particular topic that all it's fine no change in the tatparya because the truth cannot be improved upon it is not science somebody discovers a fact and the fact and the fact is it's not a fact really because the next person comes and he says and he proves upon that fact therefore it is not really a fact the factual facts are not facts they are subject to improvement because of because of the the advancement in science but shastra it is not like that it is just yeah the tradition is a, is a pipeline is a pipeline through which the teaching as it is it is transferred it is presented nobody has any authority to modify it nobody can modify it. if it is modified then then it ceases to be a pramanam then it is not a then it is it is doesn't come under within the fold of sampradaya and it is not accepted therefore as taught by the guru 
so it has to be presented it is not copy paste also this is what is expected in the tradition also tatparyam there should not be change in the tatparyam can use different words and the words have to be very careful should be carefully used because the words this pramanam being a shabda pramanam shabdam shabdatmakam the words have to be carefully used even though the the teacher knows the meaning of the words but what the student understands that also he has to take into consideration therefore because the words certain words which you are familiar with you may understand by our familiarity but that is not what the teacher meant in that context so that has to be clarified therefore proper words the words which convey the meaning the intended meaning of the guru that has to be used by the guru so therefore that is how the the, the sampradaya it is and we have, we have seen which is which is very particular about using the words because there are a lot of misconception means this misconception about certain things and because of the usage of certain words it is we see the translation therefore when we read a translation also it has to be carefully read understood but the words the, with the knowledge what the words give because of the words it can be because of the the the, the improper words but the knowledge can be misguiding so therefore one has to be very careful in using the words so with all this uh, the, the precautions the sampradaya it is presented take into consideration it is presented so it's all requires the anugraha anugraha of the guru or the teacher and the sampradaya therefore every text begins with the mangala acharan it is very important and here also the first shloka as well as the second shloka mangala charanam mangala acharanam grantasya parisamaptih and grantha parichaya the grantha prachaya for the completion of the text and also for the grantha prachaya the grantha has to has to survive has to spread has to be read by the students has to be read by the dear people and get benefited that is the intention of the author therefore mangala charanam a commentator uh, says mumukshi mumukshi janan jigrikshaya vedanta tattva tattvartha sukha bodhaya ಪರಮಕಾರುಣಿಕಃ ಶಂಕರ ಅವತಾರ ಶ್ರೀ ವಿದ್ಯಾರಣ್ಯ ಗುರು ವಿದ್ಯಾರಣ್ಯ ಗುರು ಎ ಗ್ರೇಟ್ ಎ ಸೈಂಟ್ ಸ್ಕಾಲರ್ ಜ್ಞಾನಿ ಈಸ್ ಕನ್ಸಿಡರ್ ಟು ಬಿ ದಿ ಅವತಾರ ಆಫ್ ಈವನ್ ಶಂಕರ ಫಾರ್ ಸುಖ ಬೋಧಾಯ ಫಾರ್ ಈಸಿ ಅಂಡರ್ಸ್ಟ್ಯಾಂಡಿಂಗ್ ಆಫ್ the vedanta tattva he presents this text for for the mumukshu mumukshu so here here in this commentary also this is a commentary by ramakrishna we saw the name of the the author is ramakrishna has written a commentary on this panchadashi he also says prari ಪ್ರಾರಿಕ್ಷಿತಸ್ಯ ಗ್ರಂಥಸ್ ಅಭಿಜ್ಞೇನ ಪರಿಸಮಾಪ್ತಿ ಪ್ರಚಯ ಗಮನಾಭ್ಯಾ ಪ್ರಚಯ ಸೊ ಪರಿಸಮಾಪ್ತಿ ಪ್ರಚಯ ಗಮನಾಭ್ಯಾ ಶಿಷ್ಟ ಆಚಾರ ಪರಿಪ್ರಾಪ್ತ ಇಷ್ಟದೇವತಾ ಗುರು ನಮಸ್ಕಾರ ಲಕ್ಷಣ ಮಂಗಲಾಚರಣ ಸೊ ಮಂಗಲಾಚರಣ ಇಟ್ ಈಸ್ ದ ಫಾರ್ಮ್ ಆಫ್ ಇಷ್ಟದೇವತಾ ಗುರು ಇಷ್ಟದೇವತಾ ಆರ್ ಗುರು ನಮಸ್ಕಾರ ಲಕ್ಷಣ ಮಂಗಲಾಚರಣ ಸ್ವೇನ ಅನುಷ್ಠಿತ ಇಟ್ ಈಸ್ ಅನುಷ್ಠಿತ ಇಟ್ ಈಸ್ ಅಬ್ಸರ್ವ್ ಬೈ ದಿ ಆಚಾರ್ಯ ದಿ 
the author here, Vidyaranya Muni. Shishya Shikshartam Shlokena Upanibadhnati Arthat Vishaya Prayojanecha Suchayati So, Prarip Chitasya Gantasya Ripsa Rabdam Micha Arabdam Micha The desire to start So, Prarip Chitasya Gantasya the Granta, which is desired to be started by the author for the successful completion of the text, Abhignana, without any obstacle, Parisamabdi, Prachaya Gamanabhyam. This text is begun with Ishtadevata, uh, Ishtadevata, uh, Guru Namaskara. Ishtadevata is the Guru here. Guru Eva, Ishtadevata. For the author, Guru is Ishvara, Bhagavan. This is Ishtadevata. So Ishtadevata, Vudamaskara Lakshanam, Mangala Charanam is done. Let us read the Shloka. Tartana Shloka. Let us read. Namashri Shankara Nanda. Namashri Shankara Guru Padam Bujanane. Savila Samaha Mora Savila Shamaha Graha Grase Kakar Mane So Namaha Namaha is Namaskaraha Salutation Namaha Namaha Namaskara to Sri Shankarananda. Shankarananda and the Bharati Tirtha, they are same. In the beginning, we saw that Bharati Tirtha, Vidyaranya, Punishwara, they are not different, same name. So, Nama Iti Namaskara to this Shankarananda. The Guru of Vidyaranya is Shankarananda. So, the author offers Namaskara to the feet of the Guru. Namaskara to the, the feet. And the name of the Guru is mentioned. Shankarananda. Shri Shankarananda. Shankarananda Shankara Ananda. The two words are there. Shankara Ananda. Shankaroti iti Shankaraha. Sham is equal to Sukham. Sham is equal to Sukham. Namaha Namaskaraha. Kasmai Namaskaraha. Gurave Namaskaraha. And the Guru name is Sri Shankarananda. Shankarananda is a Guru. She is is added. What is Shri? We will see. So, Shankarananda is Sham. Sham meaning Sukham. What Sukham? Not Vishaya Sukham. Sham means Sukham. Sukham means Niratishaya. Niratishaya Sukham. Niratishaya Ananda. Sukham is Ananda. The word is that. That is also meaning. Ananda is also happiness. Sukham is also meaning same. Sham karoti, sukham karoti iti shankaraha. Sham niratishaya anandam karoti iti shankaraha. Here sukham, this sukham is auspicious. You can take sham is equal to sukham, auspicious. Sham karoti iti shankaraha. Anandaha Niratishaya Niratishaya Premas Padatvena Paramananda Rupaha Pratehatma Uti. This Ananda referring to the Atma Pratehatma. So the Atma, which is of the nature of Ananda. So that is auspicious. Sham. So that is Shankarananda. So, Shankarascha, so Anandascha, Shankarananda, 
ஆனந்தம் இஸ் பரம் பிரம் பிரம்மபாவம் ஆபன்னக இத்தர்த்தக சோ ஷம் மங்களம் கரோதி இது சங்கரக சங்கரச்ச அசோ ஆனந்தக கர்மதாரே சமாச சங்கரானந்தக இது சோ தட் விச் gives happiness sukham auspiciousness and that uh, and the auspiciousness that sukham is what sukham both limited and unlimited that is it gives all the purushartha dharmartha kama moksha purushartha so therefore it gives it gives the all the purushartha pala and the ultimate purushartha is moksha which is ananda so shan is a giver of moksha so that for shankarascha aso anandascha shankara ananda not only gives ananda is of the nature of ananda but the ananda he is one with one with atma this one with bhagavan ishvara therefore is of the nature of ananda there is no dukkha in him the name itself describes the person shankarananda shri shankarananda shri referring to shri means shriya yuktah shriya yuktah shankarananda shriya iti yukte shriya bhutya shankaroti iti shankarananda shriya bhutya bhuti this he has got all the ashtama siddhi one commentator says animadi ashtama siddhi yuktah iti so he has got he has got all the siddhi here we can take shri can be meaning vidya shri is vidya what vidya brahma vidya so வித்தியுக்த ஸ்ரீசங்கரானந்தோட்டோட்டோட்டோட்டோட்டோட்டோட்டோட்டோட்டோட்டோட்டோட்டோட்டோட்டோட்டோட்டோட்டோட்டோட்டோட்டோட்
ಅಂಡ್ ಗುರು ಪಾದ ಅಂಬು ಜನ್ಮನೆ ಅಂಬು ಅಂಬು ಜನ್ಮನೆ ಶ್ರೀ ಶಂಕರಾನಂದ ಗುರು ಪಾದ ಅಂಬು ಜನ್ಮನೆ ಇಟ್ ಈಸ್ ಇನ್ ಚತುರ್ಥಿ ವ್ಯಕ್ತಿ ಇಸ್ ಅ ಸಮಾಸ ಇಸ್ ಅ ಕಾಂಪೌಂಡ್ ವರ್ಡ್ ಲಾಂಗ್ ಸಮಾಸ ಇನ್ ದಟ್ ಫಸ್ಟ್ ವರ್ಡ್ ವಿ ಹ್ಯಾವ್ ಸಿನ್ ಶ್ರೀ ಶಂಕರಾನಂದ ಅಂಡ್ ಈಸ್ ಅ ಗುರು ಶಂಕರಾನಂದ ಚಾಸ ಗುರು ಮಮ ಗುರು ಅಂಡ್ ಐ ಆಫರ್ ನಮಸ್ಕಾರ ಟು ಇಸ್ ಪಾದ ಪಾದ ಮೀನ್ಸ್ ಫೀಟ್ ಅಂಬು ಜನ್ಮನೆ ಅಂಬು ಜನ್ಮನೆ ಮೀನ್ಸ್ ಅಂಬು ಈಸ್ ವಾಟರ್ ಜನ್ಮನೆ ಈಸ್ ದಟ್ ವಿಚ್ ಇಸ್ ಬಾರ್ನ್ ಇನ್ ದ ವಾಟರ್ ದಟ್ ವಿಚ್ ಇಸ್ ಬಾರ್ನ್ ಇನ್ ದ ವಾಟರ್ ದ ಫೀಟ್ ವಿಚ್ ಇಸ್ ಬಾರ್ನ್ ಇನ್ ದ ವಾಟರ್ ಹೌ ದ ಫೀಟ್ ಕ್ಯಾನ್ ಬಿ ಬಾರ್ನ್ ಇನ್ ದ ವಾಟರ್ ಇಟ್ಸ್ ನಾಟ್ ದ ಫೀಟ್ ಬಾರ್ನ್ ಇನ್ ದ ವಾಟರ್ ವಾಟ್ ಈಸ್ ಬಾರ್ನ್ ಇನ್ ದ ವಾಟರ್ ಈಸ್ ಲೋಟಸ್ ಕಮಲಂ ಪಂಕಜ ಪಂಕಾತ್ ಜಾಯತೆ ಇತಿ ಪಂಕಜ ಇಟ್ ಈಸ್ ದ ಲೋಟಸ್ ಸೊ ಅಂಬು ಮೀನಿಂಗ್ ವಾಟರ್ ದಟ್ ವಿಚ್ ಇಸ್ ಬಾರ್ನ್ ಇನ್ ದ ವಾಟರ್ ಈಸ್ ಲೋಟಸ್ ಸೊ ಅಂಬು ಜನ್ಮನೆ ಇಟ್ ಈಸ್ ಇನ್ ಚತುರ್ಥಿ ಪಾದ ಅಂಬು ಜನ್ಮನೆ ಮೀನ್ಸ್ ಅಂಬು ಜನ್ಮ ಮೀನಿಂಗ್ ಲೋಟಸ್ ಪಾದ ಮೀನಿಂಗ್ ಫೀಟ್ ದಫೋರ್ ಪಾದ ಅಂಬು ಜನ್ಮನೆ ಮೀನ್ಸ್ ಲೋಟಸ್ ಫೀಟ್ ಲೋಟಸ್ ಫೀಟ್ ಮೀನ್ಸ್ ದ ಫೀಟ್ ಆರ್ ಕಂಪೇರ್ ಟು ದ ಲೋಟಸ್ the feet of the feet of the guru compared to the lotus why it is compared to the lotus lotus even though it is it, it is born it grows in the panka in the mud but still it is not solid not touched by the the the, the mud it is not touched by the panka it still it remains pure in spite of in spite of being in panka the mud it it is it maintains its purity similarly the guru is pure pure in means what because pure means in terms of knowledge because he has got knowledge therefore it is pure purity therefore to the lotus feet of the guru guruho padau and the padu is ambu janmane padak kamalam so guruho pada kamale to the two feet to the two feet means two to the lotus feet of the guru guruho pada eva ambu janma samasa guruho pada eva ambu janma ambuni janma then ambu janmane chaturthi and guruho pada the two feet of the guru are the the kamala and ambu janma iti so therefore shankarananda the guru pada ambu janmane shri yuktah shankaroti iti shankarah shankarascha so anandah shankaranandah tasya sah eva guru shankarananda guru tasya padau mama namaskarah tasya padau eva anbu janma ತಸ್ಮೈ ನಮಸ್ಕಾರ ತಸ್ಮೈ ಮಮ ನಮಸ್ಕಾರ ಚತುರ್ಥಿ ತಸ್ಮೈ ಟು ದ ಲೋಟಸ್ ಫೀಟ್ ಆಫ್ ದಿ ಗುರು ಐ ಆಫರ್ ಮೈ ನಮಸ್ಕಾರ ಸೊ ಶ್ರೀ ಶಂಕರಾನಂದ ಗುರು ಪಾದಾಂಬು ಜನ್ಮನೆ ನಮಃ ನಮಸ್ಕಾರ ದೆನ್ ದ ಸೆಕೆಂಡ್ ಲೈನ್ ಸವಿಲಾಸ ಮಹಾಮೋಹ ಗ್ರಾಹ ಗ್ರಾಸೈಕ karmane iti here the author mentions the the action of the guru what does the what do the what does the guru do guru does the job of grasana grasana grasa karmane karma meaning action karmane grasa eka karmane he does only one job what job he does it does the job of gra- grasanam grasa grasa is eating devouring guru voraciously he eats voraciously is eat grasa eka karmane he does only one job and that is eating he always eats grasaha eva mukya mukyam karma here the commentator he says 
त्रास एव मुख्य कर्म त्रास एव मुख्य कर्म दट इज सह एव एक मुख्य कर्म व्यापार तस्म सो मुख्य कर्म इज प्राइमरी एक्शन इज ईटिंग in the bash the commentary it is there if you can see the line it's okay so he does the primary job of eating his job is only eating and uh, what does he eat my acharya he, he says when he when uh, the guru kulam he thought the guru eats not in the dining hall he eats in the lecture hall his venue of eating is lecture hall lecture all one is not supposed to eat but guru eats because the food is different the food is shark is the food the guru swallows the the shark what is a shark maha moha is a shark graha grasaika karmane maha moha moha is this agnanam this delusion and it is maha it is greatest greater the greatest delusion called agyanam mahamoha that is that is compared to the shark and the guru he keeps on swallowing the shark shark is its food this agyan that this agyanam mahamoha the ignorance that is the shark and the shark is the food of the guru so the agyanam of the disciple the students are his food it means what he removes the agyanam of the the disciples aha mogah eva agyanam aha mogah agyanam eva graha graha is the shark so this aha moha is that is agyanam that is eva that is all that alone is graha the shark so maha moha is called is called graha the shark agyana so grahasya grasanam yasya the this eater of the shark grasanam is eating so the eater of the shark that is the agyanam maha moha so when he eats he eats eating means removing eating is removing he removes he removes agyana agyanam is this a karanam along with it karanam all the karyas karyas also he removes he removes agyanam along with its products karya so vilasa vilasa is vilasena saha vartate vilasa vilasa means karya vilasa means karya ya karya is the product savilasa mahamoha graha trasaika karmane vilasaha karya vargas karya vargah tena saha vartate iti savilasaha so vilasa means karya karya means the product product means the effect agyana and agyana karya agyana is ignorance and agyana karya is the samsara from agyana only kartrutvam arises then kartrutvam is there then kama karma karma palam and therefore karma palatvat janma punar janma then again kama karma karma palam janma punar janma it's a cycle so agyanam is the cause for kartrutva and kartrutva is the therefore kama is the kama rises to karma karma rises to karma palam karma palam to janma is a cycle and the cycle never ends it is an endless cycle so therefore savilasa along with the dikarya the, the effect of this agyanam so vilasena vilasaha karyam karya vargah तेन सह वर्तते विलासेन सह वर्तते स विलास यहाँ मूल अज्ञान सहयोग ग्राहक दट अलोन इज 
Graha, the shark. Makara divatu Makara divatu Sva Vasham praptasya Ativa Dukka hetu Tasya Grasaha Grasanam Sahayeva Ekam Mukim Karma Vyaparaha is yet at Tata the snake it there. That eater that he eat he eats he eats the Graha, which is the Aha Moha, that great delusion called Graha. He eats because that is the Dukkha Hetu, the cause for Dukkha. So, Tasya Grasanam, Grasaha Grasanam, he eats. He eats means he removes. He removes the, the Ajnanam of his students. That is its Mukya Karma, Mukya Vyapara. So, therefore, Savilasa Maha Moha, it is called Graha. In this shloka it is called graha compared to graha this shark and guru swallows that guru removes that removes the ajnana and he saves the disciple the students from being swallowed by this mahamoha by this great ajnana the delusion to such a guru i offer by namaskara to such a guru, Samilasa Maha Moha, Graha Grasaika Karmane, to the guru who has got only this job, the primary job of removing the this Ajnanam along with its offshoots, the products. The guru, he removes that to that guru, to the feet of such guru, to the lotus feet of such guru. I offer my Namaskara, my beautiful. Mangala Charna Shloka. So that is the, the meaning to the lotus feet of such Guru. I offer my Namaskara. Savilasa, along with the Karya, this Maha Moha, which is compared to Graha, the shark. Grasa, Grasa is Grasanam, eating, that is removing, and that is the only Vyapara, the action done by the Guru. So to him, referring to its Guru, Karmane, Karmane is it's all, this is. To this, referring to the Guru, Chaturthi, to the Guru, it's a Samasa, Bhagavad Samasa. The whole thing is a Bhagavad Samasa. And Sri Shankara and the Guru Padam Bujanane, that is also in Chaturthi Bhakti. Therefore, the Anvaya, rewriting the words and putting the form of a sentence, it's called Anvaya. And Anvaya would be Savila Samaha Moga Graha Grasa Ika Karmane, Sri Shankara and the Guru Padam Bujanane. Namaha, Namaskaraha, Nama Namaskaraha Iti. So that is the, the meaning of this shloka. Then we will read the, the next shloka. Tatpadam Burhat Dvandva. Tatpadam Burhat Seva Nirmala Chetasam. Seva Nirmala Chetasam. Sukabodha Yatatvasya. Sukabodha Yatatvasya. Viveko Yam Vidhi Yate. Viveko Yam Vidhi Yate. So yet. The author, before is he presents the the topic, he has to he has to tell what is this what what the text text meant for. What is the purpose of the text? The text should serve some purpose. It must have some purpose. To I mean, who are all the people? Eligible, qualified to read the, the text that has to be mentioned. That is what is called Anubandha Chatushtayam. We are familiar with the word Anubandha Chatushtayam. Every text, every text directly or indirectly, or presenting the one Chatushtayam means for presenting the one factor, all the other factors are brought in, understood. So it is presented Anubandha Chatushtayam, four factors. Fourfold factors or fourfold connections is called Anubandha Chatushtayam. Anubadhyateti Anubandha. 
the factors which connect which connect what which connect so many things which connects the the reader with the text which connects the the subject matter with the text that is also a connection so the factors are called the four factors are called anubandha chatushtaya so that has to be presented by the author before getting into the, the topic of the text chatushtaya means a group of four the group of anubandha means that which connects the binds a person to what he studies so anubandha chatushtaya so when to the, the this text is meant for is it is it meant meant for whom meant for meant for the the people who are engaged in doing the actions the karma prescribed in the veda purva or it is meant for the mumukshu or meant for gaining something else in life dharma artha kama ityadi purushartha what it serves what purpose it serves what does it give what what does a person gain by gaining the knowledge of this text so all these things have to be dimensioned so that when it is known then the person may take up the text for further study otherwise he will stop here itself so in the beginning itself it is said what it deals with then the reader may pursue further or he may stop the, the book any book we read that is why we read we read the the introduction thus we see the title of the book and see whether it is it is of interest to us that is a connection you see the title of the book and you and it it is interesting and you feel connected to the book therefore you buy the book because because the title of the book attracts you or the title of the book is interesting to you it is deal it is connected to your area of your study suppose if you take java programming i don't have anything to do with java programming the book is so nice it's a bound book what is it is going to do i don't know what computer is what i will do with the java programming so it is of not interest to me suppose if you see some other book the title itself attractive so you buy the the book so that is what the connection is anubandha so here idanim avantara prayojana kathana prasaram grantha arambham pratijani te the author does the pratigya that declaration through this to the through anubandha chatushtayam to the presentation of anubandha chatushtayam the topic is the topic is here viveka ayam tattvasya viveka sukha bodaya vidiyate 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 means it is written or it is enjoined that's called vidiyate abidiyate presented abidiyate presented or vidiyate here it is vidiyate vidiyate means it is said or enjoined or written vidiyate in tattva bada visa vasudevendra yogindram atva gyana pradam gurum umukshonam hitarthaye umukshu that the adhikari is addressed who is adhikari the umukshu these desire the seekers of knowledge moksha umukshonam hitarthaye tattva bodo vidiyate tattva bodah abidiyate tattva boda the text called tattva boda the, the topic is tattva topic is tattva boda and the text also is called tattva boda it is presented abidiyate here similarly ayam tattva sukha boda ya tattvasya vivekah ayam abidiyate ayam tattvasya vivekah 
ತತ್ವವಿವೇಕ ತತ್ವ ವಿವೇಕ ಇಸ್ ತತ್ವ ವಿವೇಕ ಪ್ರಕರಣ ಇಸ್ ಕಾಲ್ ತತ್ವ ವಿವೇಕ ಪ್ರಕರಣ ಸೊ ತತ್ವ ವಿವೇಕ ತತ್ವ ವಿವೇಕ ಅಯಂ ತತ್ವ ವಿವೇಕ ವಿಧೀಯತೆ ಇಟ್ ಈಸ್ ಸೆಟ್ ಇಟ್ ಈಸ್ ಇಟ್ ಈಸ್ ರಿಟರ್ನ್ ಫಾರ್ ವಾಟ್ ಪರ್ಪಸ್ ಸುಖ ಬೋಧಾಯ ಫಾರ್ ಈಸಿ ಅಂಡರ್ಸ್ಟ್ಯಾಂಡಿಂಗ್ ಸುಖ ಬೋಧನ ಸುಖ ಬೋಧಾಯ ಫಾರ್ ಈಸಿ ಅಂಡರ್ಸ್ಟ್ಯಾಂಡಿಂಗ್ ನೋ ಕಾಂಪ್ಲೆಕ್ಸಿಟಿ ಸೊ ಫಾರ್ ಈಸಿ ಅಂಡರ್ಸ್ಟ್ಯಾಂಡಿಂಗ್ ಅಯಂ ವಿಧೀಯತೆ ವಿವೇಕ ಇಸ್ ಬಿಂಗ್ ಪ್ರೆಸೆಂಟ್ ವಿವೇಕ ಮೀನ್ಸ್ ವಿವೇಕ ಮೀನ್ಸ್ ಡಿಸ್ಕ್ರಿಮಿನೇಷನ್ ಸೆಪರೇಷನ್ ಡಿಸ್ಟಿಂಗ್ವಿಶಿಂಗ್ ಅಂಡ್ ಅಂಡರ್ಸ್ಟ್ಯಾಂಡಿಂಗ್ ದಟ್ ಇಸ್ ಕಾಲ್ಡ್ ವಿವೇಕ ಸೊ ವಿನ್ ವಿವೇಕ ಇಸ್ ಅನ್ ವಿವೇಕ ಇಸ್ ಅ ಟಾಪಿಕ್ ವಿವೇಕ ಇಸ್ ಟು ಬಿ ಡನ್ ದೆನ್ ಇಟ್ ಮೀನ್ಸ್ ವಿಚಾರ ವಿವೇಕ ವಿನ್ ಬಿ ಸೈ ಇಟ್ ಈಸ್ ವಿಚಾರ ಎನ್ಕ್ವೈರಿ ಬಿಕಾಸ್ ಅಂಡರ್ಸ್ಟ್ಯಾಂಡಿಂಗ್ ಡಿಸರ್ನಿಂಗ್ ಥಿಂಗ್ಸ್ ಆಸ್ ಇಟ್ ಇಸ್ ಬೈ ರಿಮೂವಿಂಗ್ ಬೈ ರಿಮೂವಿಂಗ್ the the by removing of the 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 agyan the 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 ignorance two things are mixed up therefore there is a confusion therefore there is some wrong understanding therefore the things have to be distinctly understood therefore the vichara to be done the enquiry to be done therefore viveka is vichara vichara means enquiry enquiry into something to find out what it is that is called vichara analysis so when two things are mixed up we have to distinguish distinguish the distinguish one from the other that is called viveka vichara so viveka is involved viveka is involved when one one thing is mistaken for the other the truth and the untruth they are mixed up therefore viveka is required that viveka is called tattva viveka here it is tattva tattvasya viveka the truth and the untruth the atma and anatma they are mixed up therefore vichara to be done therefore tattva vichara tattva viveka vichara vidiyate tattvasya viveka tattva viveka that is the title so the brahma which is the tattvam the truth atma which is the truth it is mixed up with anatma so therefore vichara to be done so atma anatma vichara that is tattva vichara tattva viveka vichara vidiyate brahma as it is atma as it is is it is not understood it is always mixed up with anatma in all the the condition what is available is only brahma but it is not understood as it is it is as though mixed up with anatma brahma being pure shuddha and it is always understood or or recognized to be mixed up with the impure anatma so therefore atma is impure iti that is what our general wrong understanding is understanding it or general understanding wrong understanding brahma as it is is not understood agam atma it is not understood agam when we say this body mind sense complex is anatma always it is it also comes along with that in the jagrat avastha what happens this atma is is mixed up with this sharira mana sangata the stool stool shariram so therefore there is sharira strong sharira abhimana that is what atma is considered to be by me in the jagrat avastha in the waking state the swapna avastha in the dream state same atma which is ever pure what happens to that i mix up with sukshma sharira in the swapna prapancha so therefore swapna sharira abhimanam is there that is what atma is that is what myself in swapna avastha in the sushupti also it avastha also it is same the sushupti avastha this atma is mixed up with connected with or identified with this karana shariram so in three 
all the three avastas atma being there but in each avastha it is confused with anatma anatma shariram the sharira trayam stola sukshma karana shariram but brahma as it is it is asti bhati priyam it is asti it is sat it is bhati it is chit it is priyam it is ananda swarupa as it is it is not understood but it is mixed up with the nama roopa and understood as brahma brahma is understood as as depending on depending on what it is connected with it is it is understood just on the brahma on the atma all these upadis are adhyaropitam or superimposed and therefore there is a mix up and therefore there is a confusion and brahma is mistaken atma is mistaken i mistake myself for this individual this avastha and the shariram or the kosha etc therefore viveka is necessary therefore only the viveka vichara is important and therefore sukha bodhaya sukha bodhartham for easy understanding this text is written and for whom the text is written anubandha chatushtayam we said sukha bodhaya for easy understanding for whom tat padam tat padam tat padam rugudvandra seva nirmala chetasam nirmala chetasam nirmala chetas chetas mean the mind antakkaranam nirmala is nirgatam malam yasmat that from which the nirmala has gone what is the mala ragadvesha that is a mala so therefore nirmalam ragadi rahitam cheta chetaha antakkaranam yesham te that is nirmala chetasa so nirmala chetasa means mala is this ragadvesha like and dislike this ragadvesha we discussed in gita for that for, for, for the neutralization of ragadvesha only this karma yoga is prescribed by bhagavan krishna par antakarana shuddhi antakarana is ashuddham because of ragadvesha likes and dislikes when the ragadvesha are neutralized then antakaranam the mind becomes nirmala so with a pure mind that is the mind not conditioned by our likes and dislikes so therefore nirmala chetas the chetas the mind antakaranam which is pure so antakaranam becomes pure relatively pure how when the person gains sadhana chatushtaya sampatti sadhana chatushtaya sampatti the four fold qualifications viveka vairagya shamadi shakta sampatti mumukshutvam shama dama uparati titiksha samadhanam so this is accomplished that is i become a adhikari by gaining the sampatti this wealth the four fold qualification so therefore nirmala chetasam indicates this sadhana chatushtaya sampatti so by saying nirmala chetasam the author covers the adhikari must be a sadhana chatushtaya sampannah iti nirmala is pure mind nirmala chetas it is only a upalakshana by that we can bring in sadhana chatushtaya sampatti all the sampatti viveka vairagya samadhi shakta sampatti everything can be brought in so nirmala is only a upalakshana the mind which is pure which is which is prepared that's a prepared mind the mind becomes prepared by practicing karma yoga as taught by bhagwan krishna and here author says how to get how to get the chitta shuddhi seva it is seva seva nirmala chetasam seva means service seva is service 
சேவையா சேவையா நிர்மல சேதசாம் இந்தி ஸ்லோக நிர்மல சேதசாம் சேவா நிர்மல சேதசாம் சேவா மீன்ஸ் தற்பாதாம் புருகத் துவந்த சேவா சேவா மீன்ஸ் தன் பி சேவாய் சேவையா நிர்மல சேதசாம் சேவா டு ஹூம் குரு சேவா குரு சுஷ்ருஷா ஆசிரம சேவா ஸ்டூடெண்ட் லிவிங் இன் தி ஆசிரம் does the seva to the ashrams does the seva to the guru seva to the ashram is seva to the guru or doing personal service to the guru tadvitti pranipatena pari prashnena sevaya in gita also bhagavan krishna says sevaya by offering your service guru doesn't require service but rendering service to the guru shows that our preparedness our readiness 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 to gain knowledge pleasing the guru so that when the guru is pleased when the guru understands the preparedness of the student the readiness of the student and the readiness of the student is exhibited by his humility by his offering his service the guru teaches it is not it is not uh, satiating the ego of the guru it is to make the guru understand that i am a yeah yeah adhikari and a prepared student therefore seva is important and seva also gives chitta shuddhi therefore guru sevaya guru sushrush sushrusha pada sevaya guru pada sevaya nirmala chetasa so by doing seva to the guru the one who those people who have gained nirmala chetas antakarna shuddhi what type of the pada to which the, the disciples have done seva ambu ruha dwandva ambu ruha dwandva ambu ruha ambu is water ruk ruha is ruk means to grow rohati rohati ruk datu rohati first kana datu vadi kana datu rohati rohatah rohanti so ambu ruk is a pratipadigam ambaruk like lik we are going to see this you can see in the next class ashtadhyayi class ambaruk akaranta shabda ambuni rogati iti ambaruk ambu meaning water ruk meaning that which grows in the water water what does it grow what what does what does grow in the water again lotus kamalam so ambaruk means lotus ambaruk the pada is is compared to the lotus the lotus feet whose feet tat pada tat referring to tat pada tat referring to the pada which has been referred to in the previous shloka pada of namashri shankarananda guru pada tat pada the feet of shri shankarananda guru mama guru so <coughs> tat pada is the amburu is a lotus feet is a lotus so his feet are like lotus pure so service to the lotus feet of the guru gives chitta shuddhi service to the lotus feet of the, the guru gives chitta shuddhi the purity of mind so the one who has done seva to the guru and acquired this chitta shuddhi is adhikari is adhikari the for adhikari one factor is covered and the topic is tattva viveka vishaya is tattva viveka what are the other factors involved in this anubandha chatushtayam which the author did not say but we have to bring it that we will see we will see that in the, the next class om purnamada purnamidam purnat purnamudachate பூர்ணய பூர்ணமாதாய பூர்ணமேவாவசிஷ்யோஜிவாதி
धन्यवाद धन्यवाद अतुल जी